All right, welcome back to Tablet 4. We are in our third repetition of the journey. Let's do it. At 20 leagues, they broke bread. At 30 leagues, they pitched camp. At 50 leagues, they traveled in the course of a day. By the third day, a march of a month and a half, nearer they drew to Mount Lebanon. Facing the sun, they dug a well. They put fresh water in. Gilgamesh climbed to the top of the mountain, to the hill he poured out an offering of flour. O oh, mountain, O oh, mountain, bring me a dream so I see a good sign. Ankudu made for Gilgamesh a house of the dream god. He fixed a door in its doorway to keep out the weather. In the circle he had drawn, he made him lie down and falling flat like a net, and falling flat like a net, lay himself in the doorway. <clears throat> Gilgamesh rested, his chin on his knees. Sleep fell upon him that spills over people. In the middle of the night, he reached his sleep's end and rose and spoke to his friend. My friend, did you not call me? Why have I wakened? Did you not touch me? Why am I startled? Did a god not pass by? Why is my flesh frozen numb? My friend, I have had a third dream. The dream that I had was an utter confusion. Heaven cried aloud while earth did rumble. The day grew still, darkness came forth. There was a flash of lightning, fire broke out. The flames flared up, death rained down. The flashes of fire went out. Where it had fallen turned into cedar, turned into cinders. You were born in the wild. Can we take counsel? Gilgamesh had a terrible nightmare. He's so afraid. He's so afraid. He's gonna fight Umbaba and there's gonna be fire and brimstone and everything's gonna turn into cinders and ashes will rain down. Oh, it's gonna be bad. Having heard the words of his friend, Ankudu gave the dream a meaning, saying to Gilgamesh, My friend, your dream is a good omen. Fine is its message. That's a little ridiculous. I'm sorry, Ankudu, that's, that's bullshit. <laughs> Fire and brimstone. Oh yes, that's a good omen. It's, I assure you it's a good omen. You were just telling him like a moment ago, like, don't go to kill Humbaba. It's a bad idea. You're going to die. That's what you were telling him in the previous tablet. And now you're like, oh no, the fire and brimstone. That's, that's a great omen. These stories not, not make on the narrative consistency. But, you know, that's not really the point. Not really the point. Narrative consistency is overrated, I think. It's mythology. All right, so my friend, your dream is a good omen. Fine it is, its message. The rest of Ankudu's explanation of the third dream is lost, but this lacuna in Tablet 4 can be filled in part by the old Babylonian school tablet from Nippur. All right, let's listen to the school tablet from Nippur. We draw, my friend, ever nearer the forest. The dreams are close, the battle is soon. You will see the radiant auras of the god of Humbaba, whom in your thoughts you fear so much. Locking horns like a bull, you will batter him and force his head down with your strength. The old man you saw is your powerful god, the one who begot you, the divine Lugalbanda. Lugalbanda. The text of Tablet 4 becomes available again. So Angudu's like, no, no, it's fine. We're going to go fight the god. Of course you're afraid, but you're just going to go fight him, and Lugalbanda is going to protect you. Lugalbanda, let's do this, Lugalbanda, yeah. Okay, so the text of Tablet 4 becomes available. Our next repetition. Ready? Okay, this is repetition number four. At 20 leagues, they broke bread. At 30 leagues, they pitched camp. 50 leagues, they traveled in the course of a day. By the third day, a march of a month and a half nearer, they drew to Mount Lebanon. Facing the sun, they dug a well. They put fresh water in. Gilgamesh climbed to the top of the mountain. To the hill, he poured out an offering of flour. O oh, mountain, bring me a dream. O oh, mountain, bring me a dream, so I see a good sign. Ankudu made for Gilgamesh a house of the dream god. He fixed a door in its doorway to keep out the weather. In the circle he had drawn, he made him lie down, and falling flat like a net, lay himself in the doorway. 
Gilgamesh rested his chin on his knees. Sleep fell upon him that spills over people. In the middle of the night he reached his sleeps, and he rose and spoke with his friend. My friend, did you not call me? Why have I awakened? Did you not touch me? Why am I startled? Did not a god not, pa did a god not pass by? Why is my flesh frozen numb? My friend, I have had the fourth dream. The details of the fourth dream and its explanation are not well preserved in Tablet 4, but the Babylonian tablet from Nippur supplies a more complete version of the text. I'm so glad we have this Babylonian tablet from Nippur. I'm so glad. Too bad Isis is destroying all of them. Yeah, okay. My friend, I've had the fourth. It surpasses my other three dreams. I saw a thunderbird in the sky. Up it rose like a cloud, soaring above us. It was, its vestige distorted. Its mouth was fire. Its breath was death. Be ready for that phrase to come back. Its mouth was fire. Its breath was death. There was also a man. He was strange of form. He and stood there in my dream. He bound its wings and took off my arm. He cast it down before me upon it. Sounds pretty terrible. Its, what was that? Its mouth was fire and its breath was death. That's pretty terrible. Pretty terrible. After a short lacuna, Angadu explains the dream. You saw a thunderbird in the sky. Up it rose like a cloud soaring above us. It was, uh, it's vicious, it's vicious, it was a, it's vicious distorted visage. It's vision, visage. I'm, I'm bad at pronouncing things. It's, it's vision, it's visage. It's vision distorted. <laughs> Sorry. It was its visions distorted. Its mouth was fire. Its breath was death. You will fear its awesome splendor. I shall its foot and let you rise. The man you saw was mighty Shamhash. Not not him, Baba. It was Shamhash. The text of Tablet 4 resumes, though badly broken. Ready for some word salad? Here we go. My friend, favorable is your dream. This whom Baba like will be kindled upon him. We shall bring about his, we shall bind his wings. We shall, his, we shall stand upon him. And next morning we shall see a good sign from the sun god. That was repetition four. His mouth was fire. His breath was death. At twenty leagues they broke bread, at thirty leagues they pitched camp, fifty leagues they traveled in the course of a day. Facing the sun they dug a well, they put the fresh water in. Gilgamesh climbed to the top of the mountain, to the hill he poured out an offering of flour. O oh, mountain, bring me a dream so I see a good sign. Ankadu made for Gilgamesh a house of the dream god. He fixed a door in its doorway to keep out the weather. In the circle he had drawn... He made him lie down, and falling flat like a net, lay himself in the doorway. Gilgamesh rested, his chin on his knees. Sleep fell upon him, that spills over people. In the middle of the night, he reached his sleep's end. He rose and spoke to his friend. My friend, did you not call me? Why have I awakened? Did you not touch me? Why am I startled? Did it... <coughs> Excuse me. My friend, did you not call me? Why have I awakened? Did you not touch me? Why am I startled? Did a god not pass by? Why is my flesh frozen numb? My friend, I have had a fifth dream. Lacuna. Another account of one of the dreams and Ankudu's explanation from it survives from the old Babylonian tablet from Tel Harmal. Ancient Shadapum. Shadupum. Ancient Shadupum. I want to go visit Ancient Shadupum. I don't want to go to Iraq. I want to go to Ancient Shadupum. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to... I'll recount the dream in the next video. In Ancient Shadupum. Shadupum.